Today on The Young and the Restless, Devin and Abby discuss marriage, Billy warns Phyllis, and Phyllis reveals she's under Tucker's thumb. Jack joins Billy and Diane in the boardroom at Jabot, fresh from his trip to New York. Jack explains that he learned Ashley and Tucker are planning to take her patents from the company. Legal has discovered that there are loopholes that will make this possible. She's planning on using Diane's past to make her case. This doesn't surprise Billy, who suggests they have Diane step down. Jack blankly refuses. He won't let Diane lose out because of their sister's irrational vendetta. Billy worries that this could end up bringing them all down. They can't underestimate how far Ashley will go. Billy says having Diane step away would only be temporary. She supports this plan but Jack continues to refuse to back down. He won't budge one inch, regardless of what his sister and Tucker plan. Billy hears him but warns this is about to get ugly. Once he exits, Diane apologizes and tells Jack how much she appreciates having him in her corner. He will always be in her corner but right now he just wants them to go home and make up for some lost time. When Jack and Diane get home, he gives them both a drink and she says this almost feels normal. He promises a lot more normal. When he mentions Phyllis coming out of hiding, she tells him about Carson also coming out of the woodwork to defend her. That all sounds sketchy to Jack, but she says that the EMT had a guilty conscience. It may be hard to buy but Phyllis could use it as a get-out-of-jail card. This is nauseating for both of them. Everything could still work out just fine for Phyllis. They talk about Diane's encounter with Phyllis. She tried to convince her she was moving past the anger, but couldn't tell if Phyllis was sincerely remorseful or if it was all just an act. She almost doesn't care if Phyllis beats the charges. Jack doesn't think Phyllis can walk back what she did and will be busy mending fences. Diane tells him about Summer trying to fix things with Kyle and how it went nowhere. This doesn't surprise Jack given how angry his son is. Diane feels bad and blames herself for this entire mess. Jack insists that where there is love, there is forgiveness. Ashley and Tucker arrive at the Chancellor estate with some housewarming gifts for Devon and Ashley. Abby thanks her and comments on how happy she looks. Although Ashley is happy, that doesn't mean she's made up with Jack. However, cuddling up to Tucker, she adds that she's not going to let that spoil things for her, not now that everything is falling in place for her and her future. When she gets her mom alone in a corner, Abby asks if she's really confident in Tucker. Her mom admits that she's had her doubts, but he makes her happy and she doesn't want to let go of giving love one more chance. Tucker hands out glasses to everyone for a toast. Seeing his son in Catherine's house is more than a day he could have wished for. He knows he hasn't been the father that Devin deserves or needed, but he intends to spend the rest of his days making up for that. It's what his mother would have wanted. He knows Ashley thinks highly of her daughter too. They toast to life, love, and a hopeful future. Sitting on the couch, Ashley asks her daughter if it's awkward being back in the house she shared with Chance. Abby admits she does feel a little guilty sometimes. Things feel perfect. This is the life she always wanted and she thought it was going to be with Chance. Her mom tells her she doesn't need to feel guilty for that but Abby feels like she tricked Chance into thinking it would have a happily ever after. Ashley wants her to feel like things are perfect always. Across the room, Devin asks Tucker if the rumors are true that he and Ashley plan to take her part of Jabot. His dad doesn't want to talk business. He calls over to the others, and they get up to announce they are getting married in a few weeks. It will be a small affair and they don't know about the venue yet. Devin and Abby are silent. Tucker starts pouring more champagne. Their kids think this is fast. Ashley senses Abby doesn't trust this and Tucker insists that he will never hurt her mom again. He notices how quiet Devin is and asks for his thoughts. You never cease to amaze me, Devin says. His father laughs and adds that's not exactly a full-throated endorsement. The kids agree to give them their blessing. Abby insists they need to let them throw their wedding at the house. That's touching and surprising to Tucker. Abby admits it looks like they are genuinely falling in love. Tucker asks if they are sure they really want to host this wedding. Their kids want to support them. They toast to it. Once their parents leave, Abby asks Devon if she surprised him. Her offer to host the wedding did surprise him. She admits she's had a hard time imagining Tucker in her mom's life, but watching them tonight made her think otherwise. Devon hopes that Ashley is right to trust his father, 
but he knows you just have to go with the flow when it comes to Tucker. But he can also see the love on their faces. They kiss and cuddle. He brings up how they have never really talked about marriage. They've talked about raising Dom and living there, but not marriage. Today, he started to think they should talk about it. She loves that idea. They kiss. Phyllis jogs into the dining lounge of the GTHC and is startled when Heather explains that Christine would not budge. She won't drop the charges regardless of what Carson says. She's not buying her story and wants to take her to trial. Phyllis exclaims that the DA is obsessed with taking her down, but the lawyer doubts this is personal. Her client suggests that they should put the EMT in protective custody so no one can get a hold of him and make him recant his testimony. Why would anyone want to do that? asks a confused Heather. Phyllis claims she's being in the hypothetical and wouldn't put anything past Christine. She warns the lawyer about her dark side. Heather is sure that there is something going on that she is not telling her if Phyllis feigns having no clue what she's talking about. The attorney hates surprises and doesn't want a shoe to drop when they get to court. If she doesn't come clean now, she needs to find another lawyer. Choking up, Phyllis explains to Heather that Tucker has her under his thumb and she can't get out. He's the one who found Carson and convinced him to come forward. He has her life in his hands. It annoys the lawyer that she kept this from her. Phyllis thought she could work this out. Heather bluntly asks if Carson is telling the truth. Did he really witness her being coerced and attacked? If any of this is a lie, she will go down. Phyllis insists he only knows things a witness would know. When Heather asks what Tucker wants from her, Phyllis spills about the Diane situation. She repeats that McCall can't be trusted, and it's like he's holding an axe over her head. Given the case entirely hinges on Carson's testimony, they need to keep him safe. Phyllis admits she's done a lot of damage to her children and wants to make things right for them. She's less concerned about the Abbots. Heather recognizes they need to keep Tucker happy and get this trial over with as fast as possible. If that means she needs to make amends to keep McCall happy, that's what she needs to do. Phyllis repeats that she will make things right with her children. Big changes will be coming. Wouldn't that be something? Billy remarks as he interrupts. He asks if Phyllis has a prayer and she insists she has her innocence on her side. Tucker eavesdrops from a few feet away as Heather tells Phyllis her instincts are right about protecting Carson and rushes off. McCall follows and Billy invites himself to sit with Phyllis. He wants to talk about her daughter. Billy explains he's been very impressed by how Summer has dealt with everything. She has grown into quite a woman and she's pushing through her conflict with Kyle. Phyllis is proud of her. Billy warns the redhead to be careful not to break her daughter's spirit. Phyllis claims this situation has changed her and shown her how much she has to lose. She wants to be the person her family loves and respects. Billy wants to believe that. When she asks how Jack reacted to her coming back, he admits his brother is skeptical, but Diane would like her to walk the plank. He's pulling for her and sure she can pull herself from the inferno. Heather runs in and Billy takes off. The lawyer announces that Carson has disappeared. Ashley walks into the Abbott house and immediately starts arguing with Jack. Diane leaps up and declares that she's out. She refuses to be ammunition in this war, so she's resigning from the company. That means that there's no reason for Ashley and Tucker to keep fighting. Jack refuses to let Diane go and offers to sign over any part of the company to his sister if that's what she wants. Ashley thinks he's sick, but he says he would do anything for the woman he loves. Jack declares this war is over. Tucker wanders in and asks what's going on. Ashley says Jack is caving. Diane refuses to let this happen and repeats that she's out. 